Right, why don't we <clears throat> take a moment just to pray together and then we will start. Can I request um, somebody to please um, pray with us this morning and let's get started. Um, who wants to pray? Um, Avni, can you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, Pastor. Good morning. Thank you. Father God, we come to your throne of grace, thanking you for all your goodness, your faithfulness, Father, your promises that we stand upon, Father, for your word that enriches us day after day, Father. We just want to say thank you, Abba, Father. Thank you for all your mercies. Thank you for keeping us alive, showing us this new day. For every breath that mm -hmm. we take, Father, we may glorify and praise you, Father. And thank you, Lord, Father, for leading us to live a life of holiness, Father. And as we are diving deep into the word, Father, May this word enrich us, Father, and may we walk according to thine calling, Father, according to thine word, Father. Lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to receive the word in its fullness, Father. Be blessed, and as we walk in it, Father, we may glorify you in everything that we do, in word, action, and deed, Father. We once again thank you for Pastor. We thank you for leading him to teach us such beautiful truths. Timeless truths, Father, and as we are learning, may we glorify you in everything, Father. Lead us, take complete control, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise, and ask the blessings upon everyone who is part of this fellowship, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise, and ask this prayer in the precious, matchless, and most magnificent name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. Once again, welcome. So we, we um, on Monday, we started talking about uh, two important uh, means that God has given to us to practically overcome uh, the pull of the flesh, the world, and the devil. First, we said is we must use the word of God. Now, we didn't spent too much time on that because uh, most of us are familiar uh, with you know how to take the word of god how to meditate in the word how to speak the word how to go to the bible in our time of need um, most of us understand how to do that that uh, you find the scriptures that speak to your need you meditate in it you speak it you use the the word of god as a sword so we mentioned it and the second uh, means that God has given to us is what the Bible talks about as walking in the spirit. And that's what we are spending time on because we want to understand what it means to walk in the spirit. How does it, how, how do we do it practically? And how can we know if we are walking in the spirit? So we're spending a little bit more time on it. Um, we read two passages. Uh, one is from Romans the eighth chapter. The other one was from Galatians five. Uh, what I'd like us to do is just to read those passages uh, again, and then we will read the third passage, which is uh, Ephesians five. Let's read these three passages. Put them side by side because all these three passages are uh, uh, have been written by the Apostle Paul for us, and um, they are speaking to us about. Uh, walking in the spirit or you know we may we may use different terms we may talk about living the spiritual life or uh, being filled with the spirit or living in the spirit you know people may use uh, different terms and it's all biblical terms um, but these three passages are parallel passages they are talking about the same thing and so we'll read them all and then Together, we want to draw an understanding of what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? How can I do it practically? And how can I tell if I am walking in the Spirit or I'm not walking in the Spirit? Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and um, share the PDF uh, which we've been using. Let's see here. Yeah. Walking in the Spirit. 
uh, let's just read those passages one more time just to you know refresh our memory. Uh, we'll, somebody could read uh, Romans 8, uh, 1 through um, 14, if you could read that quickly for us. Romans 8, 1 through 14, please. Pastor, can I read? Yes, please. Uh, Romans 8, verses 1 to 14. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ, because through Christ the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the Lord was, uh, law was powerless to do because it was weakened by flesh. God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be sin, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have mindset on what the flesh desires, but those who live in the accordance with the spirit have their mindset on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the uh, spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit, if in, indeed in the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ, but the Christ in you. Then even through, even though you, your body is subject to that death, because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. Amen. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, 16 to 26, please. Um, Galatians 5, 16 to 26, somebody can read for us quickly. Galatians 5, 16 to 26. I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rev revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Thank you. And the last passage, Ephesians 5, 17 to 21. Ephesians 5, 17 to 21, please, somebody. 
Ephesians 5, 7 to, uh, 17 to 21. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. So, it's really um, wonderful if we look at these three passages, you know, in detail, in detail. Um, there's a lot, a lot that we could uh, draw out of this. In Romans 8, um, Paul, and, and we mentioned some of this last class on Monday, he's drawing a contrast. And remember, he's talking to believers. So we're not, we're not contrasting a believer and an un unbeliever. No, we are contrasting two believers, two people who, who, are, who are in Christ, but they're living differently. Right, so he's writing to believers. He's writing to those who are in Christ. And what does he say? He says, you know, a, a, a believer could be living in accordance to the spirit, or he could be living accordance to the flesh. Um, a believer is living according to the flesh. He is. He has set his. Uh, uh, you know, he's is carnally minded, or his mind, uh, the, his thinking. It's all governed by uh, the passions and the desires of the flesh. His thought process, his pattern of thinking, his way of thinking. A believer who's living according to the spirit is spiritually minded. That means his mind, his thought, his thought patterns, his thinking, his passions, his emotions are influenced or governed by the Holy Spirit and it's set on spiritual things. So he says if, you're, if a believer is carnally minded, uh, it's going to result in death. If a believer is spiritually minded, it's going to bring him life and peace. So, you know, here's a big difference. Two believers, one can enjoy life and peace. Another one is like, you know, going through, uh, he's getting into worse and worse things yeah, because he's living according to the flesh. Then he says, if, if, if we are carnally minded, we cannot please God. Right? So uh, if we are spiritually minded, then of course we are pleasing God. And then what happens is, as we are spiritually minded, living according to the spirit, what, 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 what actually happens is, it says the body is dead. That means the fleshly ungodly desires of the body is put to death. But spiritually, we're alive. We have the life of the spirit and, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we have everything that comes from God, righteousness. And then he says, you know, truly, this is verse 12 of Romans 8. Truly as believers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, but the life we are called to live is to live in the spirit, to walk according to the spirit, to be spiritually minded. And then uh, he makes this, you know, the summation of it in verse 13. He says, you know, look, as a believer, he's telling us, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. So Romans 8.13 is a key verse. By the Spirit, I put to death the deeds of my body. Right. So there's a key here. How do we overcome the flesh? By the Spirit, I put to death the deeds of my body. And the same thing is, uh, is given to us in Galatians 5. And, uh, and I'm looking at Galatians 5 where the Apostle Paul is telling us, you know, we know there's a, um, there's a conflict. Uh, the spirit differs from the flesh. You know, the flesh, uh, flesh is, is, is going after what we, he mentions, the works of the flesh. And then he gives us a list of things there, the works of flesh. So the flesh wants to do these things. And he says, and the like, meaning there's, there are a lot of other things that are like this, which the flesh wants to do. And the flesh is in conflict with the spirit that is a 
that is our spirit that's governed by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, of course, is going to lead us in things that are holy, uh, things that are of love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, goodness, temperance, faith, those kinds of things, the virtues of Christ. And so there's a clash here, right? There's a clash. But he says, as believers, we are led by the Spirit, we live in the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit. And he says, if you walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5 and verse 16, if you walk in the Spirit, you know what? You, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh has its pull, but if you walk in the Spirit, you're going to be overcoming the flesh. And eventually, verse 24 of Galatians 5, he says, those who are Christ's, and as you belong to Jesus, what will happen? You will crucify the flesh with its affections and desires. So the flesh has its affections and desires, ungodly affections. But if you keep walking in the spirit, what are we doing? We will crucify it. We'll put it to death. Right? And this is the life of, of the believer. That is, they live this life where uh, the ungodly desires of the flesh are pulled down. They're crucified. They're put to death. They're brought to an end. How? By the spirit. By the spirit. And if you, Galatians 5, 24, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and desires. So we are living in the spirit, we are walking in the spirit, and this is the end result. The flesh is crucified, and the fruit of the spirit is what is seen in our lives. People see the fruit of the spirit. Then in Ephesians 5, he tells us, you know, he says, uh, and this is an interesting uh, uh, parallel, he says, you know, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So, okay, here's some, he's doing, a, he's giving us a comparison or a contrast, but it's also very meaningful. So he's saying, look, a person is drunk, intoxicated, but don't be like that, but be filled with the Spirit. Or you could say, uh, to be filled with the Spirit is, and I'm just using our language, to be intoxicated by the spirit but in a good sense right now uh, 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 in the natural when somebody's intoxicated with with wine or whatever alcoholic thing uh, they lose control but not so with the holy spirit we are still in control but all of our, ourselves are under his influence it's governed by him so his influence is on us so to be as supposed to be filled with the Spirit, and to be filled with the Spirit means all of me is continuously under the influence of the Spirit. And that's what it means to walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit means to walk filled with the Spirit, to walk intoxicated with the Spirit, to walk under the influence and governed and led and directed by the Holy Spirit, and my life flows from Him. And as we walk in the Spirit, or walk filled with the Spirit, what happens? The flesh is crucified. The flesh is crucified. And we are actually living that Spirit-filled life. Right? So let's break it down and try to break it down in these notes. Um, what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? It means we walk yielded to, and I'm just, I just try to use synonymous terms here, so at least something will come through, right? Um, to walk yielded, to walk under the influence, uh, to walk in submission, uh, to walk under the direction and by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So that's what it means. Yeah? We are walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Right. So uh, the illustration here, of course, is the of contrast of a person who is uh, in, under the uh, under the intoxication versus somebody who is spirit influenced, spirit governed, and spirit guided. So, how do we do this practically? Right. So one is to stay filled. Stay filled. Now, stay filled. You can just understand it simply. Stay full of, full of him. Right. So. And again, please forgive me for using 
this might be a very crude thing example but you know it's like a person who's drinking if he drinks a little bit he doesn't get intoxicated he's you know he, he to get drunk uh, Ephesians 518 to be drunk drunk he's got to get full of something and right? he's got to drink that alcohol above a certain level so to speak so you can think about that in and draw a parallel it's a crude parallel but if you just have a little bit of the holy spirit you're still not filled we're not still under his influence but when we are filled that means all of me that my cup is full of him my cup is full of him so to be filled with the holy spirit is me bringing myself fully under his influence right and it is as simple as a prayer just say holy spirit fill me holy spirit come fill me holy spirit i bring all of me in submission to you simple prayer right because getting filled with the spirit is one is it's an act of your will you are making yourself fully in submission to him right so many people don't understand this they think oh being filled stay filled means i, I say, you know i make a lot of noise and uh, you know clap my hands and speak in tongues and i mean it's good to pray in tongues i'm not saying that and uh, you know I, I believe in spending many hours in praying in tongues and i do that but what i'm saying is to be filled literally means my cup is full of him it's not my cup is half of him and half of the world that's not being filled with the spirit being filled with the spirit is my cup that's my life is full of him but how do i make my cup full of him well it's as simple as saying to the holy spirit holy spirit fill me have all of me everything of me right it starts with that simple prayer and if i find that i have strayed from that place of being filled with the spirit maybe you know one of the works of the flesh have taken an upper hand maybe i became jealous or became you know contentious or as uh, gave place to some selfish ambition or something like that. i just say lord i'm sorry i bring myself lord fill me i bring myself back in this place so i recognize that a work of the flesh has i've given room to a work of the flesh i repent of it and i bring myself back to being under his influence to being full of him right it's as simple as that but i we live like that we live constantly filled with the spirit right then how do we walk so we're talking about how do we walk in the spirit practically right we're talking about that how do we walk in it so first is stay full that means i keep my cup full of him which is as simple as saying holy spirit fill me i bring myself under your influence fully and if i find myself straying from that place i repent of that and bring myself back secondly stay spiritually minded right so to walk according to the spirit we saw in romans 8 we need to be spiritually minded so those who live according to the spirit what do they do they set their minds on the things of the spirit so if i have to live according to the spirit my mind must be set on the things of the spirit so that's the second thing i must do my mind my thoughts my emotions my attitudes my desires my passions must be on things of the spirit things that are pleasing to the holy spirit things that are approved by the holy spirit things that are you know under the governance of the holy spirit i must set my mind my thoughts on it right and it's very interesting you look at this particular phrase from other versions uh passion translation puts it like this 
those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves, but those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. So, so to live according to the Spirit, he's, they, they put it as to live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, you know, giving you the triggers, the fires, the firing, the impulse, and you are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. Right? Or some other versions, everyone who's ruled by the Spirit, Holy Spirit thinks, thinks about spiritual things. Those, live, those who live following the Spirit are thinking about what the Spirit wants them to do. Uh, Good News Bible says, those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by the Spirit. And uh, the version Chaya was reading, I don't know what it was, but it says, uh, I think it said something like, uh, they're governed by the Spirit. The mind is governed by the Spirit. Pretty interesting. So uh, just to show us that if you want to walk according to the Spirit, you have to let your mind also be influenced by the Holy Spirit. That means what you think, uh, what you set your affections on, your passions on, your attitudes, your emotions, they're all under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So the moment uh, an ungodly, unclean thought comes in, right? so let's think about this, going through the, throughout the day, as you're going through the day, the moment something a thought comes, a motivation comes, an idea comes, a passion or an affection in our mind, it's stirred up, that is not of God, that is not, you know, according to the purpose, will and pleasure of the Holy Spirit, you shut it down, say no, I'm not going to pursue that. That thought is not acceptable, it has no place in my mind. Then you and I must understand that your mind is yours. God has given you full control of the mind. See, the devil tells us, give up control of the mind. And that this is where, you know, a practicing certain forms of meditation is dangerous, where they tell you, you know, you just let your mind go. No, 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 don't let your mind go. Keep your mind in control. Don't let your mind go. You keep your mind in control. You are, you must be in charge of your mind. Because if we let our mind go, the devil is very happy to take it, right? So we must, God gave us our mind, that means our thoughts, our emotions, and we must be in control of that, right? So if a thought comes, uh, any motive, anything that's not pleasing to God, you take control because to live according to the spirit, I must be, my mind must also be spirit controlled, right? So first, I must be full of the Holy Spirit. My cup must be full of the Holy Spirit. Second, I must, my mind must be spirit controlled. My thoughts, my ideas, my, they must be holy. And must let the Holy Spirit control. And the third is this, just ask the Holy Spirit for help. See, there will always be times when you feel angry uh, or, uh, you know, you, the work of the flesh, the work of the flesh is waiting to jump out of the flesh, right? Uh, so we saw Galatians 5, the flesh less against the spirit and the spirit is opposite to the flesh. So yeah, we have the flesh, we have the body and there are bodily desires, uh, fleshly desires, sometimes the soulish desires, uh, it, 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 there are times it feels like that, head, that evil head wants to, you know, stick out again. Yeah, feel angry, irritated, uh, wrong desires, wrong things, temptation, all those kinds of things. Yeah, jealousy and pride and whatever, all those wrong things, works of the flesh. But at that moment, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Holy Spirit, I feel like this. Please help me. Remember, both in Romans 8.13 and in Galatians 5.24, saying the same thing. Romans 8.13, if you by the Spirit put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. Galatians 5.24, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh 
with its affections and desires. How do we do it? By the Spirit. So you say, Holy Spirit, please help me. I'm feeling this. You know, whatever that emotion, I'm feeling. Holy Spirit, help me. And Romans 8, 26, that same chapter, Romans 8, and he skipped down a few verses, you know, Paul kind of takes a little detour in his writing. He talks about, you know, the, the decay and the corruption that's in the world. And then he comes back to Romans 8, 26, and he says in verse 26, continuing with his original thought, he says, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So when you feel weak, when you feel it, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. And the word help in the Greek simply means to take a hold of together with us against. Right? So what does it mean to help? It doesn't mean He does it for us. No, it means He does it with us. So many people don't understand it, right? They think Holy Spirit will do it for you. Holy Spirit will not do it for you. He'll do it with you. That's what it means to help. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. That means my will is involved and His empowering comes in to accompany my will. He helps us in our weaknesses. How does He help us? It says, for we don't know what to pray for. So, you know, you feel helpless. You don't know, God, I just don't know how to pray. I mean, maybe I feel angry. Maybe I feel upset. Maybe, uh, you know, whatever that, whatever that weakness may be. And we don't know how to pray. What am I to pray for? You know, do I bind the devil? Do I lose the devil? Do I cast him out? Do I, what, what am I supposed to do? We don't know what to do. Well, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. That means he takes a hold together with us in our weakness. How? Through prayer. Because He makes intercession for us. Now, sometimes when we read that word for us, we, in our minds we think He's praying separately. No. What was the subject when it began? He helps us. He takes a hold of together with us. Therefore, the solution is also something that's executed with us. He makes intercession for us by praying with us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Because that's the whole meaning of that word help. Right? So many people think, oh, Holy Spirit is praying for me. He's not praying for you independently. He's praying with you. He's praying for you by praying with you. And that's the process by which he helps us overcome our weaknesses. Right? So he says, Holy Spirit, please help me. And then you go and pray. Pray. Now, you say, how much should I pray for? You see, there may be some things, just one line of prayer is more than enough to receive that empowering and overcome. But there are times and there are things that you and I may contend with that requires hours of prayer. Right? So there's, there's no, there is no, you know, or you pray for five minutes or pray for 30 minutes. It's not like that. It's, you pray till you know you have overcome through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And for some matters, you may have to pray over a period of time. But you pray. Ask the Holy Spirit for help till you overcome, till you come. You know, and, and, and praying in the Spirit is so powerful because... When you're praying the Holy Spirit, He gives you the revelation. He gives you the wisdom how to overcome. Because sometimes it takes some wisdom to overcome a situation. You know, uh, for example, uh, and I, I may have shared this with you. Uh, this happened some years back, you know. Um, we uh, had uh, uh, we had a and, and like this, you know, there are just so many, so many examples I could think I could share with you, but just giving up just practical things, right? So uh, we had a, uh, some years back, um, we had a, years back, I think, so years, it's not a long time ago, but I'm talking about 
2020, 2020, yeah, I think it was 2020. So that particular year, uh, you know, we had an open house. That means people from the church, anybody could make any comment, ask any question about the church and also open house. And then somebody had put a comment. And, and so, uh, you know, so we let them post questions and all of that online. And uh, Saturday was the day we had scheduled a time and people would connect and I would respond to whatever questions and all that. And... Uh, so on Friday, that is the day before, uh, I, I had told somebody to you know, just collate all the questions. And if there are questions that, that, that are similar, you just put them together so we can answer them together and all of that. Uh, and so I think it was, and I, I may have, I missed this exact sequence by a day or two, but it, it happened something like this. I think uh, it may have been a Thursday or a Friday when I looked at the fully collated list of questions that came from people. And there was one comment that was really harsh, very harsh. And it hurt me when I read it. You know, uh, this, this person, whoever had put that question and that comment, so they could put a question, they could put their comment to anything that the church was doing. And it was so hurtful, you know, and uh, immediate, you know, my immediate reaction was anger and hurt and how could this you know and, and it was a totally anonymous but kind of i had a sense of who would have put it because sometimes you know you know the people in the congregation and you you kind of have an idea of who's saying what who thinks uh, in which way uh, although it was anonymous and, and so i was very and they were comparing our church with another church in the city which i don't like to do at all you know i don't like comparing churches and so this person was comparing what apc was doing with another church in the city and and oh, oh, it, it it really hurt you know but now we have committed ourselves to answering these questions and responding to these comments and it's like on saturday it's this online open house meeting but i was feeling hurt you know i was like how could somebody talk like this, you know, and make these kinds of comments? And, you know, it's, it's very hurtful. So I just, I went and prayed. Because what was my normal, re my initial reaction? Anger, hurt, uh, wanting to, okay, let me show this, <laughs> let me, you know, uh, you know, just say what I want to say, give them a piece of my mind, so to speak, kind of thing. I felt that. So then I said, okay, I know this feeling is not godly. I know this is not this feeling of, you know, hurt and anger and all. It's not the way from the spirit. And I, I cannot let myself be in that place. I need to get out of that place. But I am feeling it because I read the comments. I read the things. All the other questions were, you know, fine, you know, very sincere questions. But this was very hurtful. So I just left my computer and I went and prayed. And I spent, and I, I forget the exact number of hours, but I prayed for a long time because I felt so hurt, right? And I was praying, God, this is what somebody said. And I think I know who it is, but doesn't matter. This is how it is. I'm feeling like this, God, it's, it's very hurtful. And, and, and you know what we've been doing and you know the work we've been doing. And, all of that, and I was talking to God. And in that time of just praying in the Holy Spirit, because I know I cannot let myself be in that fleshly situation where I am feeling hurt and angry and uh, want to kind of retaliate almost. I cannot be in that emotional situation. I need to bring my mind, my emotions, under the governance of the Holy Spirit. Only then I can walk in the Spirit. So I was praying, God, this is how I'm feeling. How do I handle this? And so this is why we pray in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is empowering your spirit to pray. And during that time, He's going to give you wisdom 
to overcome the situation. He's not only, not only going to help you overcome your weakness, he's going to give you wisdom to overcome the situation that is, that's causing you to feel like this. So two things happened. First is the Holy Spirit, you know, helped me uh, by saying, be kingdom minded. Be kingdom minded. That means instead of addressing this question from your feeling of hurt and anger and retaliation, address it from God. I want your kingdom to come. This is about your kingdom. It's not about APC and some other church. It's about the kingdom. So I'm going to speak from that perspective. If another church is better than us, of course, there are many churches better than us. Praise God for it. If another church has different strategies than us, praise God for it. Be kingdom minded. And that, um, I would say that instruction from the Holy Spirit helped to release all the uh, fleshly, hurtful feelings. Secondly, the Holy Spirit gave me an idea how to respond to that question. Just show him the data. Just show him the data. Now, the person who asked the question I knew was from an IT, uh, in IT, IT enabled services background. So, of course, they need to they will understand data. And so the second was wisdom. Just show him the data. Because of course, when you're looking from outside, you don't know all the data, and we we don't you know we don't talk about numbers in our church services very hard. We don't very rarely because you know the service is meant for preaching and ministering the word of God and not bragging about numbers, and so people don't know the real numbers. So and so then out of the lack of knowledge or information, obviously they would make all kinds of conclusions and wrong conclusions and wrong assumptions. So second was just show him the data. So and anyway, I spent a lot of time praying. I got these two things. I made myself clean. That means I came out of that place of uh, anger, uh, being hurt, retaliation, came into this place of this is about the kingdom. It's not about me. It's not about comparing churches, not about, you know, who's doing what. It's about God's kingdom. And I'm just going to show the data. I let the data speak. So I quickly, you know, I just had very little time to prepare, but I just went and got all the data. So we have an analytics software uh, that runs behind our websites. So we know exactly what's happening. We know how many downloads, people, which country, who is coming. We have the IP addresses of everybody, whatever. So we have all the data. Uh, so I just quickly put, it, put the data to get this in the you know, thing. So next, and I in his purposely told, you know, uh, Pastor Jacob, I was hosting the thing. I said, you know, put his question first. Let's start with that rather than you know, Let's address that first. So we opened the meeting, welcomed everybody. He said, okay, this is the first thing. And everybody, you could say, get a sense of people were shocked that this kind of a comment and a question would be raised. But then I had already prepared myself in prayer and I'd already got the data. So I just said, this is this, this is the reality. These are the numbers. This is what you know is happening. And that's it. That was it. It just put everything to rest. Okay. So I'm just saying. Uh, there's this one example. I like this. They're just numerous. You know, as you walk with God, we will all face uh, these situations where the flesh rises up. We feel angry or irritated, whatever, for various situations. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit for help. And how does he help us? He helps us pray. So go and pray. Sometimes a simple line of prayer is enough. Sometimes you pray for two minutes, it's enough. Sometimes you may pray, you may need to pray a little longer until you know you have overcome that. And he gives you wisdom to know how to deal with the situation. And lastly, you know, we speak the word of God, right? So declare what the word says. This is important because the declaration of the word is also the sword of the spirit. That means the Holy Spirit comes in on the scene when you are declaring the word. Okay, I, um, 
I think that story took too much time. Anyway, um, okay, I'll have to finish this next week. All right, let me pause here. We just have five more minutes. Let's, I take some questions here. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't cover everything that, that we wanted to cover, uh, but practically, how do we walk in the spirit? We said first, stay filled with the spirit. Keep your cup open. Two, be spiritually minded. Keep your mind governed by the Holy Spirit. Three, ask the Holy Spirit for help and ask him. And fourthly, speak the word of God. Just say the word of God. Because when you speak the word, the Holy Spirit comes on the scene. Right? Because it's a sword of the spirit. Hearing the Holy Spirit gets involved. So that's how we practically walk. Practically, we, we walk in the spirit. That means we walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Any questions? Okay, uh, I see your comments, Chai. I see your comments, Louis. Uh, any any questions on this? Okay, so what we need to do next is understand how I can tell if I'm walking in the spirit. Right? What are the signs? How can I tell? And that's important. So we will pick that up. Uh, on uh, Monday to show us, you know, we know how to walk in the Spirit, but what would be the evidence of me walking in the Spirit? What are the signs of a Spirit-filled life? That's the right there in Ephesians 5, the passage we read. So we're just going to go through it. We'll itemize it so we, it'll be clear for us. Okay, our time is up, and I don't want to delay you from your next class. So may I request somebody to... Um, Please pray, and then we'll dismiss um, after we pray. May I request somebody to please pray? Pastor, can I pray? Please go ahead, Our Heavenly Father, once again, we are most grateful and thankful unto you for this opportunity to live once again. We thank you for the opportunity to sit under your feet once more to be taught and to be inspired by this word. Father, we pray the Lord as we strive to live a life of holiness, as we strive to live a life of purity, as we strive to sanctify ourselves daily by your word and by your spirit. We pray that the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, continue to help us in this journey in the name of Jesus. We live in an evil world and if your spirits do not come to help us, Lord, we will be overcome by the evil in this world. We pray that may we not be overcome by we, but we be overcomers of the world mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Whenever we come faced with temptation, whenever we come faced with trials, whenever we come faced with, 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 with the flesh trying to overcome us, May we be may our spirit and our strength be renewed in you, O oh God, that you mm. live a life of victory in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we bless you for the life of Pastor Ashes. And we continue to pray that Lord preserve him and sustain him, that he will continue to impact even the generation after us. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Uh, have a good rest of the day. Enjoy your other classes. I'll see you soon. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.